you know, from the silence arises this still, small voice. If in moments one is identified with beliefs of fear, doubt, and uncertainty in relation to what appears on the way to actualizing a vision, this still, small voice arises to provide mental clarity, vivid accuracy, clear discernment, to relate ideally to what appears on the journey to actualizing the vision, to maintain the ideal state of mind, your flow and harmony in relation to your vision, mental peace, clarity, etc. And this is what I'd like to discuss with you today. So I titled today's mind map, Unfailing Wisdom from the Still Small Voice Within. Our conversation today is based primarily on a book called Abd Allah, Teacher Healer, by Walter C. Lanyon. Abd Allah, from some of my sources, is said to be the same Abdullah who mentored Neville Goddard and Joseph Murphy on the law. We discussed a bit about Abdullah in Sunday's video. If you haven't seen it, I'll link in the description to it. This book was published in 1921. Abd Allah says, This is a glorious thought and one well worth sitting in the silence with. I and my father are one. You have heard it for years, yet when you ponder it anew with the thought that from the next thought I am going to think God's thoughts, it will reveal in you a newness of life and purpose you have never known before. The still, small voice of which so much has been said will finally become the only voice as you begin to realize your oneness with the Father within. So I love this part here, which I'd like to further explore with you. The still, small voice of which so much has been said will finally become the only voice as you begin to realize your oneness with the Father within. Now, what helps tremendously is discernment between the noise of mental chatter spawned from past beliefs that are not ideally related to your vision and the true inner voice that speaks from the silence which is in harmony with your vision. I find this still small voice arising during or after meditation, walks in nature, or physical activity like running or snowboarding. This still small voice has brought so much clarity to me over the years in times where on the surface it might not appear that things would change ideally. The still soft voice would arise from the silence if I was identified with beliefs of uncertainty revealing the next steps to actualizing my vision. For example, I remember it was 2016 and I was involved with a consulting project and the responsibilities were starting to pile up. And I wanted to clear up the responsibilities on this particular project so I could move forward with some mutually beneficial joint venture projects with the client. Now, you may have heard me say a number of times that what I do to bring mental clarity to a business initiative is run it through a filter which is a simple question. Could this initiative be optimized, delegated, automated, or eliminated in part or in whole or in combination? This inquiry usually allows the insight to arise. This is what I teach my clients, yet I was not aware of this filter at the time. So not knowing how it was going to change, I remember going for a walk in this area by my place at the time, and I felt a deep silence from which the still, small voice arose indicating exactly what to do. So I ended up calling up someone who I worked with on a project a few years earlier with another client. And it turns out she was interested in working with this client, but she had another job. So I brought her in part-time and she ended up shortly leaving the company she worked for, dedicating most of her time with my client. She then took over what I would say was 95% of what I was doing, which allowed me to focus on the joint venture deals I wanted to see move forward with the client, thus increasing revenues while working less hours, less force, less frustration. And this is just one story of many of the still small voice that guides. And I trust you have many as well. So let's bring up the quote again to emphasize and go deeper with it. Abd Allah said, The still, small voice, of which so much has been said, will finally become the only voice as you begin to realize your oneness with the Father within. So I've been saying this for many years now. 
When I started my first full-time business, my IT business in 2009, which I transitioned from in 2013, I used to listen to the Steve Jobs commencement speech over and over again as it was very inspiring for me. And also he shared some valuable insights that helped me along the way and still does till this day. He said, don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And also, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. So opinions are possibilities which may be explored, yet eventually one chooses to listen exclusively to the still, small voice, which may or may not be related to the opinions, yet ideally related to their vision be it ideal transformation of self and or self-actualization through invention or artistic expression, through what appears as the individual self being a conduit of divine expression. See, the world made visible through the five senses, what is that appears, is a result of past imaginings. Thus, we experience what we choose to experience. The unseen power that appears as what is and appears to animate all what is, beyond theoretical understanding of how, is initiated by calling upon the unseen as though it was seen in imagination. Romans 11.33 Oh, the depth of the riches of both the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out! Now, there are infinite possibilities in imagination that have not been actualized. So we have a choice to reimagine what appears again and again in a not-so-ideal way or listen to the still, small voice that speaks of invention, innovation, artistic expression, new life experiences, inspiration, and answers to questions one might have. And maybe what appears now is considered ideal. So there's no desire to reimagine what is, which is fine. Yet if not considered ideal, like in my example, then you can reveal via the still, small voice what is ideal and allow that to appear, which is in harmony with actualizing your vision. To articulate what I mean, let's bring up my pyramid of life. I have a series on this with a number of videos. I'll link in the description to it. The pyramid with the eye in the middle represents the heart of reality, the mind of the all. The all is mind, the universe is mental, the Kabbalion. Creation is complete and all already exists in the heart of reality. This is where ideas, invention arise from. What also arises from the all is the sense of self on the top, this I, which represents the sense of the individual self. The second I represents the desired intentional imaginal act of the desired outcome which in my case was the definite chief aim of a certain level of business success. By the way, we did a few videos this year on the definite chief aim. If you haven't seen them, I'll link in the description to them. I'm also planning a 2024 vision video in the next few weeks to discuss. So the second eye is where we realize in imagination that we already have the vision, which leaves an impression on the subconscious mind of reality being that way, which then, as we say, some way, somehow, it is done for us by the all mind here, the big pyramid with the eye. We then allow it to happen here during what appears as the journey to actualizing it here, as in materialization. So this third eye represents the actualization of what was realized here in imagination. And all of this is truly one. There's no separation only articulated here for conscious application of the law as stated in John 1, 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So during what appears as the journey to actualizing it here, if one is identified with mental chatter, the still, small voice may be called upon to reveal key insights during moments of silence and stillness, which is to abide as the I here, to receive the inspiration from infinite intelligence which represents the pyramid and I here, like Joseph Murphy said in The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. Provided you are open-minded and receptive, 
the infinite intelligence within your subconscious mind can reveal to you everything you need to know at every moment of time and point of space. You can receive new thoughts and ideas, bring forth new inventions, make new discoveries, and create new works of art. Also, a wonderful auto-suggestion worth considering he included was, the infinite intelligence that gave me this desire leads, guides, and reveals to me the perfect plan for unfolding that desire. So if you appear as being stuck in your head or uncertain, by abiding as the I through meditation or self-inquiry, which we did a video on recently, I'll link in the description to it, or by calming the mind with an auto-suggestion or a walk in nature or something like that, key insights are revealed within via the still, small voice. Now, I actually live pretty close to that same area where I walked, where I received that insight mentioned earlier. And for whatever the reason may be, every time I walk in the same area, the still, small voice emerges with insights that I take and apply, and it produces results. Perhaps you have places like this where you experience the same. Now, we can receive insights, if required, within, via this still, small voice. And we can also receive full inventions as well within. Nikola Tesla, for example, one of the greatest inventors, received his inventions within. During moments of stillness, as discussed in the Master Key System by Charles Hanel, and he would imagine them perfectly down to the last detail prior to building them. He once wrote in the Electrical Experimenter, I am enabled to rapidly develop and perfect a conception without touching anything. When I have gone so far as to embody in the invention every possible improvement I can think of and see no fault anywhere, I put into concrete the product of my brain. Invariably, my device works as I conceived it should. In 20 years, there has not been a single exception. And although he said brain, it is key to acknowledge that he also mentioned that the brain acts as a receiver. He said, my brain is only a receiver. In the universe, there is a core from which we obtain knowledge, strength, and inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know that it exists. Again, like Joseph Murphy mentioned, provided you are open-minded and receptive, the infinite intelligence within your subconscious mind can reveal to you everything you need to know at every moment of time and point of space. You can receive new thoughts and ideas, bring forth new inventions, make new discoveries, and create new works of art. Now, we've all experienced moments where ideal ideas arise from the silence, perhaps during or after meditations walks in nature, flow-based activities where the mind is clear from mental chatter. When we go into the silence, we go to the beginning, the heart of reality here, to allow the insights to arise from the heart of reality. And the I that emerges, which is the sense of self, re-becomes the conduit of divine expression. Again, John 1, 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him, not anything was made that was made. Speaking of which, there's a chapter in Abd Allah, Teacher Healer, called In the Beginning. Let's explore it. He says, In the beginning, what does that call to your mind? What do you think of when you say, In the beginning? Can you mentally take yourself to a place of hushed silence where nothing was as yet manifested, that is, in the beginning, then you move away from the beginning, you begin to see creation appear. I love that. You begin to see creation appear. So thus we purposely go into the silence and arise from the silence with the still, small voice of clarity in relation to our vision. He says, Out of what did it appear? In the beginning, before a single plant or animal had come to light, there was naught but silence. The substance of things hoped for is the material from which creation was made. This beautiful world of ours was made out of something. You must admit that. It was formed and molded out of substance, thought substance which became visible. So, 
ideally on what appears as the journey to actualizing our vision. We walk by faith, which is to allow. We allow it to happen. Like, let there be light, and the light was. And if identified with doubt-based beliefs, we can go into the silence with one of the ways mentioned, or whatever way you'd like, to reveal the still, small voice, which is distinct from mental chatter, providing vivid clarity in relation to what appears on the journey to actualizing the vision. Thus, we can also say, to allow ourselves to appear as walking by faith, we listen exclusively to the still, small voice till, as stated in the beginning, the still, small voice of which so much has been said will finally become the only voice as you begin to realize your oneness with the Father within. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I listen exclusively to the still, small voice with matters of the heart to live what and how I truly desire to live. To desire is to have the unseen power within me that appears as what is and appears to animate all that is, is initiated by calling upon the unseen as though it were seen, guided exclusively by the still small voice within self to ideally transform what appears on and as the journey to actualizing my vision. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.